So one of the most important things that physicists can do when they're doing their plan checks and preparing for treatment is dealing with individuals who may be pregnant. So a common part three question may surround this. So what precautions would you take if a woman has a pregnancy? How would you track fetal dose? What are the risks to the fetus? What is the recommended dose to fetus and risks with the dose levels? And then where does the radiation come from? So as I've mentioned in a lot of my other videos, very first thing you want to do, if you know a task group that is associated with the question being asked, you want to recite it and use it often, especially for difficult questions. If you don't remember the risk and specifically the dose levels, if you say, hey, TG36 is a task group associated with a fetuses and fetal dose, that is really going to help you in something like this if you don't remember the exact numbers. So what precautions do you want to take? So first of all, uh, you do not want to use IMRT. That is going to increase not only neutron production, but also transmission through the MLC leaves. So you want to use some type of 3D treatment that also reduces head leakage and um, thing, it's just much better to use 3D. You want to watch angle and the field size. You want to use low energy. So that's going to reduce that neutron production as well. Now, any type of special shielding. So maybe you want, they call it a bridge where it goes over the individual stomach to help shield the fetus. You, would, you can make one of those and that would need to be four to five HVLs. And that would just be placed over the belly and help reduce the dose. And then a no excessive imaging either. So those are the precautions TG36 mentions. Now, how would you track fetal dose? So you can use a phantom measurement if you have a phantom. You can also use TLDs. You can use OSLDs. There's even MOSFETs. That's what my clinic uses. There are different nano dots, a lot of different ways to use the symmetry to estimate that, but you'd want to use one of those and you want to place them. One, you'd want to place on the fundus, which is on the top of the uterus, one in the umbilicus and one on the pubis, which is just around the cervix. So you'd want to monitor all three of those. The fetus could be, you know, around any of those three. And by having three readings that will help better estimate what the dose of the fetus is. So remember those three things they're talked about in TG36 and the examiner will be looking for those. So now what is the risk to the fetus? Now, no reason to get too into the weeds here. Be very simple. Uh, malformations, mental retardation, future cancers, and you can stop there. Those are the risks. Don't try to go into levels or anything more complicated unless they ask. So now the next question, just since we're covering it here and I would like to be thorough with you. So what are the dose levels and the risk? So if, first of all, the tolerance is five millisieverts over the entire course for, of, the, of the radiation. This can also um, be you know, monitor this if the woman has a declared pregnancy. If not, you, you don't have to monitor that. But in most cases, you have to ask the patients when they begin. And you also monitor this if you have a worker. But that's, that's a different question. So now let's talk about if you get between 10 and 50 centigrade. So that is the significant risk level for a fetus. And that's where we're talking about, you know, malformations, mental retardation, things of that nature. Now, if it's greater than 50 centigrade, that is high risk at any trimester. So trimesters definitely do matter as well. TG36 talks about this. So earlier in the trimester is more dangerous than near the end. Obviously, these are very low levels to begin with. But when they are first forming, if you remember the law of Triboni or Bergioni and Tribidal, when the cells are replicating at a faster rate, 
that is when you're at most dangerous. Also when they aren't specialized. So early in a fetus's life, the radiation can be absolutely detrimental and is most important in that first trimester to consider. So now let's talk about 100 centigrade. So say it got one gray, that is going to kill 50% of the fetuses. And obviously we are trying to prevent one gray at all costs. And then if it is below 10 centigrade, uh, for the most part, nothing happens. So that is your ideal range that you want. And you just have to figure out what do you have to do to get that. And then finally, where is the radiation from? This is important as physicists for us to know. So we have our uh, photon leakage, and this is through the head. We have our scattered photons, and that is from the patient, the MLC, the wedges. So scattered photons are very important. Even when you're dealing with 3D, you're still going to have patient scatter. There's nothing you can do about that, but you can monitor your field size and do a couple other things to help with that. And then you have your photoneutrons. Now that's only for 10X or more, but that's why you want to use low energy. So if you're using less than 10, you can ignore the photoneutrons, but this overall very important information, things you absolutely have to know going into your part three exam. You can know this and maybe even go a little deeper in detail and you'll prepare well for this type of question if you get it. So best of luck, have fun studying.